First elegy. End of a campaign. There are many dead in the brutish desert who lie uneasy among the scrub in this landscape of half-wit, stunted ill-will. For the dead land is insatiate and necrophilous. The sand is blowing about still. Many who, for various reasons or because of mere unanswerable compulsion, came here and fought among the clutching gravestones, shivered and sweated, cried out, suffered thirst, were stoically silent, cursed the splittering machine guns, were homesick for Europe and fast embedded in quicksand of Africa, agonized and died, and sleep now. Sleep, hear the sleep of the dust. There were our own, there were the others. Their deaths were like their lives, human and animal. There were no gods and precious few heroes. What they regretted when they died had nothing to do with race and leader, realm indivisible, laboured Augustan speeches or vague imperial heritage they saw through that guff before the axe fell. Their longing turned to the lost world glimpsed in the memory of letters, an evening at the pictures in the friendly dark, two knowing conspirators smiling and whispering secrets, or else a family gathering in the homely kitchen with mum so proud of her boys in uniform, their thoughts trembled between moments of estrangement and ecstatic moments of reconciliation, and their desire crucified itself against the unutterable shadow of someone whose photo was in their wallets. <coughs> then death made his incision. There were our own, there were the others. Therefore, minding the great word of Glencoe's son that we should not disfigure ourselves with villainy of hatred, and seeing that all have gone down like curs into anonymous silence, I will bear witness, for I knew the others. Seeing that literal and interior are alike indifferent, and the birds are drawn again to our welcoming north, why should I not sing them, the dead, the innocent? We're the D-Day Dodgers out in Italy, always on the Vino, always on the spree. Eighth Army scroungers and their tanks, we live in Rome among the Yanks. We are the D-Day Dodgers way out in Italy. We landed at Salerno, a holiday with pay. The Jerry's brought the bands out to greet us on the way. Showed us the sights and gave us tea. We all sang songs, the beer was free. To welcome D-Day Dodgers to sunny Italy. Naples and Casino were taken in our stride. We didn't go to fight there, we went there for the ride. And Sio and Sangro were just names. We only went to look for dames. The artful D-Day Dodgers way out in Italy. On the way to Florence, we had a lovely time. We ran a bus to Rimini, right through the Gothic line. And soon to Bologna we will go. And after that, we'll cross the Po. We'll still be D-Day dodging way out in Italy. Once we heard a rumor that we were going home. Back to dear old Blighty, never more to roam. Then someone said, in France you'll fight. We said, no fear, we'll just sit tight. The windy D-Day Dodgers to stay in Italy. Dear Lady Astor, you think you know a lot. Standing on a platform and talking Tommy Rot. You England sweetheart and its pride, we think your mouth's 
to bleeding wide. That's from your D-Day Dodgers in far off Italy. Look around the mountains in the mud and rain. You'll find the scattered crosses. There's some which have no name. Heartbreak and toil and suffering gone. The boys beneath them slumber on. Those are the D-Day Dodgers who'll stay in Italy. Heartbreak and toil and suffering gone, the boys beneath them slumber on. Those are the D-Day Dodgers who'll stay in Italy. Posso cantarlo se vuoi alla serata sì. e posso impararlo perché ma è troppo, un pochino interpretato, no? Certo. Tu, tu capisci? Di che cosa sta dicendo questa ragazza? Sì. Qualcuno ha detto che gli scozzesi sono andati lì per vacanze. Vedi Astor. <ride>